receiving that the 60 day period talks about the election itself being conducted within in other words the event of casting the ballot no you must conclude the entire process, including declaring the president. So we have to borrow from Article 138 of the Constitution, which says that you have to declare the president within seven days of conducting the election. And when you look at the, those timelines, that has been accommodated. When you look at the timelines of, for instance, having the, um, uh, the agents, the law says in Regulation 52 of the Election General Regulations, you must have your uh, uh, agent as a candidate. That has to be done two weeks prior to the election date. Mm -hmm. So all those are factors that those who are lamenting are talking about. And, and I don't see they have taken that into right. the context. But, but with all due respect, the reason why we are here is because, according to the Supreme Court, the elections were not conducted in a credible manner as per the Constitution. So if those things are not addressed, then we stand the chance, despite the timelines, of coming back to right where we are. So why not have them addressed, ironed out, within the stipulated timelines that are given constitutionally, and everybody goes to the ballot knowing that now that is taken care of? But what are those, I ask, <laughs> immediately after that judgment, I ask that Supreme Court, what is our checklist? Tell us, this went wrong, that went wrong. In my humble view, and I say during the submissions, there was no evidence. This is not a court of speculation. This is a court that is guided by the law and fact, the evidence. In my view, there was no evidence to overturn. I stand by the minority decision. But having said that, they say they will uh, give us within 21 days of the September 1st that so-called checklist. Now, how does that augur or uh, portend for the IEBC's preparation for this election. It has to wait until that period to see that, well, this is in line, that is in line. I have to ask the Supreme Court judges. Now, if you heard what NASA was arguing that 11,000 polling stations did not have 3G and 4G transmission, by reason of which there could have been issues about transmission, will that 3G, 4G deficiency be remedied? Right. within the short period of time. Let me hear from Dr. Mukwana on uh, what uh, Harrison Kinyanjui has to say, one, regarding the ruling, and secondly, the date. Uh, thank you, <coughs> uh, Michael. First of all, I must congratulate my uh, learned uh, senior thank for you. putting up a very spirited fight uh, despite the odds that stood against him. First, he comes on the table representing a clan who had dismally performed in the election, and then uh, he is confounded with uh, overwhelming evidence with respect to which he dismisses and says there wasn't evidence. He put up a spiritual job. That we must appreciate. Uh, having said that, uh, Michael, if we allow Senior to, to, to go into the merits of the decision of the Supreme Court, he works lyrical because that is exactly why he was given that job, to discredit the evidence and even after the, he did not win the case, as it were, to discredit the decision that did not go his way. So that may not really give us the best picture of the Supreme Court decision. Uh, I agree with him uh, as far as uh, he talks about the date of the elections. Uh, clearly, the time is short. And it is not feasible to, to, to have uh, a very, very good date beyond 17th. So... Yes, he's right in the sense that looking at the technicalities in terms of the compliance of the legislation, uh, 17th looked more appropriate. However, having said that, we must also take cognizance of the fact that it's not just about the law, it's also about the politics. And you're right in your commentary when you say that the reason why you're here in the first place is because there were irregularities. And whether my learned senior uh, would appreciate that or not is a question for the other day. The truth of the matter is that there were irregularities as declared by the Supreme Court. Those declarities remain, and NASA has a valid reason to say, look, yes, you're putting the date for 17th, but wait a minute. The court said there were irregularities. How are those irregularities addressed before we go to the 17th? And that is where I think the IEBC is getting it wrong. You see, whereas there is the law, we must understand that this is politics at play and there must be room for consultation. 
nothing wrong. And the law allows IBC to involve the stakeholders in the consultation. Mm -hmm. There would have been nothing wrong in IBC calling the two players and asking them, say, gentlemen and ladies, here we are. We have 60 days. The law says this, that within 60 days, everything must be completed, as my learned senior puts it. But look, how do we move about it? So that these altercations that we are emerging ought to have been discussed at the consultative table first. So that NASA also should have been challenged to offer an alternative solution that complies within the 60 days. Allow me to pose you there a little bit, Dr. Mohan, and the question would be, where do we draw the line of the independence of IEBC? At what point do they stand out and say, look, we are the arbiters, we call the shots, and at the end of the day, we are confident enough that we can do this? Because if they have to consult, what happens if they sit on a consultation table and Jubilee says we want this date, NASA says the other date? Somebody has to make a decision. Michael... IBC has independence. It is a constitutional body. Under Article 88 of the Constitution, IBC is independent. There is no question about that. Nobody ought to doubt that. But the same, same provision, the same, same law, mandates the IBC to be fair, to be objective, and to, be, to, to undertake whatever it undertakes in a way that is in the best interest of the Republic and the Constitution itself. So consultation is part of what IBC is obligated to do to make sure that the process is fair. Look, of what benefit will it be to the Republic of Kenya and the people of Kenya if IBC will go headlong, not consult, not take on board views, and for information, it is not only uh, NASA who are insisting that they ought to have been listened to. Yesterday, I think Jubilee said, look, whatever changes you have made, because Chebukati has said, this election, we are going to do it differently. I want a six-member team in a bit to address the challenges that we are talking about. And we have seen the uh, Jubilee side saying, look, we don't accept those changes. Mm -hmm. So this issue of not consulting is going to cost us. And of what benefit will it be to, our, to the people of Kenya? If IBC would go ahead, headlong, ignore all protestations, and then we end up having a boycott. Mm -hmm. An right. election that is boycotted will not give either side that goes to the election legitimacy. But for then again, that, that still behooves the question of how independent is IEBC, given that if Jubilee call uh, and say this needs to be done, they dance. If NASA call, they dance. Let me hear from you, Honorable uh, Ondege, on, on, on this. Should IEBC be consulting more or should they be this stamping their authority and saying, look, we have our house in order and this is the way things are going to go? Uh, thank you, my brother. Uh, we cannot build uh, democracy on dictatorship. And this word independence has been seriously misused. You cannot operate in a vacuum. Even if you are given uh, that independence and we have players, you must consult with the players and agree on the rules. Like now, when you talk about the date 17th, which people are now contesting, mm. uh, as people who are in NASA, I would say we, are, we don't have a big problem with the 17th date, but there are a number of issues which you want to be laid down before we settle on the date. That's why we were contesting about this date. Like, uh, we had, it came out very clearly about uh, the procurement. You look at uh, the ballots, the photocopies which are seen there, the security marks and everything. Before they come out and tell us how they want to go about these things, already the date is there. That's why we, what we are saying. It's important for people to dialogue. It's important for people to consult and agree. We don't want a situation whereby when we are remaining with a week, people are raising issues. We want issues to be raised as early as possible so that when we agree on the date, even if it is on 17th, we are clear on how the structures have been laid, which are leading us towards that date of 17th. But we don't want a situation whereby the date has been set, the complaints are here, no one has addressed them. This word independence is being misused. If there are no players, we don't need IEBC. But because we have players, IEBC must consult with the players and agree with them. We are not saying we have to dictate to them what we want. It's them to make a decision, but they have to listen to us. All right, Harrison? your thoughts on this and let's also remember that just before we go to the election on the August the 8th there were complaints that uh, NASA kept bringing things at the last minute maybe that's what they're trying to avoid this time let's sit down let's discuss let's thrash out everything agree on a date that by the time these things are sorted out we are all happy to go they say they will boycott the election if they have their issues quote-unquote not addressed very well I have to remind them in Burma, and uh, they always lament, well, that is a banana republic. They can say what they want to say, but in Burma, 
The opposition decided to boycott the election and uh, in fact is on record one member of parliament was voted in by eight votes and he served the full uh, length of the uh, term. So that's really not an issue. It will be a welcome decision to the Kenyan people if they decide to boycott the election. But, but, but what am I saying? The, the, what the, am I the, saying? The, the political <laughs> side of it is the fact that we need everybody to buy in. There is the law, yes, there is the law yes, which has certain yes. days. But it's, yes, it's gone to a point which okay. this is a very despicable act in the sense that, look, <laughs> if you write to the IEBC, the IEBC will correspond and write back to you. Why is this uh, dramatized so much that we have to have this engagement all the time full of drama and theatrics so as to attract public sympathy and to uh, lend this uh, image to the public that the IEBC somehow seems to be biased. In fact, I would castigate Chabukati by going unilaterally, as I hear and as I have established from those affected uh, secretariat uh, uh, employees of the IEBC. He has done that unilaterally to shift or to uh, impose his own so-called team because he says he's a returning officer and therefore he should do that. But wait a minute, how about also them being consulted? How about them even also receiving formal communication that you're no longer in this position. Can he, even though he is uh, the chair of the IEBC, have powers to redeploy?